Hey, it's Seth from Unison and welcome to the Unison Drum Monkey preview series. Now this is a full on three part video series where I'm gonna be sharing with you the secrets on how to make professional sounding drum loops every time. Because the truth is your drums are the foundation of your track. And if you build off a flawed foundation, it doesn't really matter how good your chords are, your melodies, your bass lines, the drums are what glue everything together and really make your track sound professional like the top tracks. So in video one, I'm going to be sharing with you the five secrets behind professional sounding drum loops. And in video number two, I'm going to be sharing with you my 10 best tricks on how to instantly make your drums sound better. And those tips are going to be organized from beginner to advanced so you can apply it no matter what your experience is. Now, before we dive in, let me quickly introduce myself so you know who you're learning from because especially music production in this day and age, everybody can set up a camera, get in the studio, and no matter how good they are, they can record a video. And especially if you're just starting out, it's very hard to know who's good, who's not, who to learn from, and stuff like that. And if you learn from somebody who doesn't have the results you want, the best you're gonna be able to achieve is their results. Plus you can develop bad music production habits and stuff like that. So my name's Sep. I'm known as a producer with over 30 million plays across platforms over 19,000 SoundCloud followers. I was featured on House Nation and Trap City, mentored by Grammy-winning producer Daryl Swan. And I've studied music production at the Musicians Institute in Los Angeles, Art Institute in Vancouver, Garnish Dub Spot, and more. Now, I didn't say all that to brag. It's just so that you can be confident that what I'm gonna teach you in this series is gonna be stuff you're not gonna find on YouTube. It's gonna be next level stuff that'll really help you take your drum game to the next level. So let's jump straight into the video. So. Secret number one is you need to use high quality sounds specific for your genre. Now this might sound obvious, but actually most producers don't know how to tell the difference between a good sample and a bad sample. Let me explain it like this. Imagine you're trying to make a five star burger like the burger in Gordon Ramsay's restaurant in Las Vegas, but all you have is cheap, low quality ingredients from McDonald's. Are you gonna be able to do it? The answer is simply no because no matter how good your cooking equipment is, how good your chef skills are, how much sauce you put on it, your ingredients are flawed from the get-go. It's stale beef, it's stale bread, stale lettuce, low quality stuff. So no matter what you do to it, it's not going to be able to be as good as Gordon Ramsay's burger, which has Wagyu beef, the freshest ingredients from the farms, etc. And the same goes for you as a producer, except your ingredients are your samples. If you make your track using low quality samples, no matter how much mixing, mastering, your fancy studio equipment, none of that matters and you won't be able to make a professional sounding track that sounds as good as the tracks on the charts. So to fix this, you have to start with good quality professional samples. Now to illustrate this secret as well as all the other ones, I'm going to jump inside my computer in a second and show you concrete examples. So for the high quality samples one, I'm gonna play the exact same drum loop, one using garbage samples and one using good samples. And I think you'll be pretty shocked at how much of a difference it really makes. All right, so I'm gonna play the exact same drum loop, one with terrible samples and another one with great samples. So this is terrible samples. Now this is the exact same drum loop, but with good samples. And let me solo the drum loop so if you couldn't already, you can really hear the difference. So check out the bad one. It's just using all the wrong samples. And believe it or not, these samples are actually appropriate for other genres, but you can see when you use them in a hip hop beat like this, it just sounds way off. But here's the good one. So everything sounds right. The kick is tight, the clap is crisp. The hi-hats are nice and everything works together when you use the right high quality samples for your genre. Let's go to a house example now. So here's a drum loop with terrible samples. And here's the exact same drum pattern, exact same placement and elements, but with high quality samples. And one last example, here's a reggaeton beat, one with trash samples and another one with really good samples. 
and here are the good samples. So as you can see, picking high quality samples can make such a difference in terms of how your drum loop sounds. It can take it from sounding trash to that professional level. Let's move on to secret number two, and that's using the correct elements for your genre. Because each genre has specific drum elements that are commonly used, and you don't want to be using the wrong ones. For example, in hip hop, there's typically a kick, a snare or clap, percussion, off snare, closed hat and open hat. If you have that stack of drums, your drum loop will sound full and proper. If you miss any of these elements, your drum loop will sound empty. And if you use elements that are not commonly used like toms or rides or even shakers, your drum loop's gonna sound weird. So you have to make sure to use the correct drum elements for the genre that you're making. All right, so for the rest of the examples, we're gonna be dealing with the good loops. We're not gonna touch those trash samples anymore. So to explain this secret, let me show you what happens when you mute certain elements in your drum beat. So we're gonna solo the drum beat here. And stuff like the kick and the hi-hat and the snare is gonna be very obvious when you mute it, but stuff like the off snare, maybe even the open hat and rims. If you mute them, what you'll notice is that you'll feel that something is missing and you might not know why, but the reason is because it's missing the rim off snare hi-hat. So check this out. So that's the complete loop with all elements. Let me mute the rim, the off snare, the open hat and the perk and now you'll feel that something is missing. It was just missing that extra spice and it became stale after about four bars. So that's why you need to use the right drum elements for your genre. I'm actually gonna give you a free download of a bunch of drum loops for actually all 30 genres that have the correct samples and the correct elements and the correct rhythms which we're about to talk about. So let's go through the house example and let me show you what happens when you meet some of these elements. So here is the house drum loop. Now again, if I were to mute the clap and the open hat, it would strip the drum loop basically to nothing. But some stuff like the closed hat, which kind of fills in the gaps between the open hat and the shaker, if you mute them, Again, it'll feel like something is missing. It becomes a little bit too basic. So again, I'm gonna give you the free download which has house samples and elements in the correct way so you can reference that. And now let's move on to the reggaeton. So let's solo the drum loop with good samples again. So if I mute the rim and the perk, Again, something will feel like it's missing. It just becomes very stale very quickly and adding stuff like rim and perk and reggaeton will add that spice that keeps it interesting. And if you play with a melodic loop like this, it'll sound complete. Now, secret number three is you need to use the right drum rhythms for your genre because each genre has specific rhythms that are followed to create that signature sound of that genre. Like hip hop is gonna have a different rhythm than house where in hip hop, the kicks are placed differently than the house, which is on every beat. Latin, jazz, rock, uh, future bass, they all have different rhythms. And also in a second, I'm gonna jump inside my computer and I'm gonna show you how much of a difference it makes if you use rhythms that are not proper for the genre as opposed to using the right rhythms. All right, so to demonstrate this, I'm gonna use a house pattern inside a hip hop track and you're gonna see it sounds way off. So if I take the house drum pattern, go here and put it in the hip hop beat, check out how weird this sounds. doesn't necessarily sound terrible, but it's way off for what it should sound like in the genre, which should be this. So that's why having the right drum patterns is so important. As you can see in hip hop, the kick is placed alternating with the snare clap. The hi-hats usually run on the 16th notes and you got open hats to keep the groove going and you got off snares to fill in the gaps at the end of bars. But if you come to something like house, 
The kick is usually on every beat. The clap is usually on every second beat. And the open hat is on the off beat. So as you can see, even between hip hop and house, the way the drum patterns are is very different. So also let's check out reggaeton, which is more similar to house, but the snare is placed on two of the off beats like this. And usually there's a perk in some kind of 16th note pattern that'll keep the groove going. And in this case, we have a closed hat as well. But if we go ahead and take the hip hop pattern, for example, and plug it into reggaeton, it's gonna sound weird. It's gonna sound way off to what it should sound like, which is something like this. Now, secret number four is you need to have catchy rhythm. The cool thing is if you do the first three things we just talked about, which is use high quality samples specific for the genre, use the right drum elements and the right drum rhythms, this will kind of come together naturally. But at the same time, making a catchy rhythm comes down to something that's relatable to most people. A lot of producers make the mistake of making their drum loops too complex. And what that does is it makes a normal listener not able to relate and feel the groove and it throws them off. And, you know, if they get thrown off and they can't relate, they won't listen to your music and, you know, it'll feel weird and they won't enjoy it. So when you make your drum loop, make sure you keep in mind a normal listener and imagine how they would react and make sure that it's simple enough so that they could get the vibe of it and don't get overwhelmed. But at the same time, you want you know, to add all the correct elements so it has that spice and keeps everything interesting. So next time you make a drum loop, make sure to pay attention and really focus on how a listener would react to it and whether your drum loop is too complex or even too simple. It's gotta be that perfect balance right in the middle so that it's simple enough to be catchy and relatable, but also complex enough so that it's interesting and the listener doesn't get bored. So you can experiment until you find something that's dialed in just like that. And I'm also gonna show you examples of really catchy rhythms and what goes into making them. So as I said, if you do the first three steps correctly, a catchy rhythm will naturally occur, something like this. Because if you just use the right samples, make sure you have all the right drum elements and the right patterns, a catchy rhythm is something that naturally happens. But the reason I included this step is in the rare case that your rhythm is not catchy after doing those first three steps, you might wanna go in, adjust stuff, and kind of imagine how your listener would listen to it and make sure that it's something catchy that'll get them to play on repeat. And last but not least, secret number five is your drum loop has to support your chord progression and melody. Because you can have an amazing drum loop, but if it doesn't really support your melody and chord progression, your track is going to sound out of sync and weird. So after you make your drum loop, your chord progression and melody, just make sure everything kind of lines up and the kicks and the snares and everything kind of accentuate the parts of the melody and chord progression. I'm going to show you examples of that right now as well. All right, so to demonstrate this, I'm going to play this on top of a melodic loop here. So let's switch the loop and play this. So as you can see, the drum loop is perfectly supporting the melody. The snares are hitting exactly when the melody is accentuated. And you can see this off snare here is supporting the transition into the next bar. So again, depending on what you're making first, if you're making your drum loop first, then you can kind of adjust your melody to match. But if, you're, if you've made your melody first, then your drum loop, you have to make sure that you know, you kind of follow along after doing the previous steps to make sure that it helps the melody instead of making it more confusing. So let's check out house as well. Let me enable this melody here. So in house, if you follow the standard rhythm, it's kind of going to match most melodies, but you might want to add the shakers and something like the closed hat in positions that help the melody transition forward. So that's something to keep in mind. Uh, let's check out reggaeton now. Let me enable another melody here and play it. So as you can see in this case, that little snare helped to go to the next part of the melody.
So again, you can make adjustments to the rhythm because that's what mainly matters when supporting your melody. The sound choice and elements have to be done before so you can adjust the rhythm if needed to support your melody. All right, so that wraps up video number one. I hope you found the information helpful and we're not even close to being done because video two that's coming out in a few days, I'm gonna share with you my 10 best tricks for instantly making your drums sound better. These are tips that'll go all the way from beginner to advanced, and I'm sure there's a bunch of them that you've never even heard of. So in the meantime, I'd love to hear what you thought of this video. Leave a comment below. I'll be checking them all myself and replying with any questions that you have. And until the next video, this has been Seb from Unison. Happy producing and cheers.